Hi, I'm Lu Yang. I will be presenting Mix and Match VTO, Multi Garment Virtual Try On and Editing. The task definition of Mix and Match VTO is slightly different from the traditional one. The input consists of three parts an input person image, multiple input garment images, for example, a top garment and a bottom garment, and garment layering attributes describing how the garment should be laid out in the final try on result. Given all these inputs, our mix and match VTO system will generate a try on result of how these garments would look on the person as well as following the input garment layering attributes. In this video, I will mainly describe how our paper tackled two common challenges in the VTO literature. The first challenge is how to render intricate garment details, and the second challenge is how to preserve person identity. Now, let's look at the first challenge rendering intricate garment details. Compared to our previous paper Tryon Diffusion, which focuses on the upper body Tryon, Mix and Match VTO aims to tackle the full body Tryon task. As we can see, the garment occupies much smaller area in the full body Tryon compared to the upper body one. Thus, it requires the model to render more intricate garment details like very small logos and texts. If we directly apply Tryon Diffusion to the full body Tryon, we can see that all those small texts and logos are missing or destroyed. For comparison, Mix and Match VTO can correctly warp and synthesize the details. Our key observation to this problem is the cascaded diffusion models used in Tryon Diffusion is destructive to the detail preservation. So why cascaded diffusion model fails to preserve the details? Here, I provide a simple example to demonstrate it. On the left, I show an image at its original resolution at 1024 by 512. Then, I downsample this image by two times using some anti-alias filters. By looking at the same area in these two images, as highlighted by the red boxes, we can see that just by downsampling the image by a factor of two, the high-frequency details got blurred out. This example tells us Training a base diffusion model below 512 by 256 will lose details as the ground truth does not include them. Furthermore, in our early experiments, we noticed that cascaded super raised diffusion models cannot hallucinate details if the base diffusion model does not synthesize them. This analysis naturally leads to our solution to train a single stage diffusion model in the pixel space at its highest resolution. However, this task is very challenging, and we found two critical designs to make it work. The first one is to replace the original cosine noise schedule with the cosine interpolated noise schedule proposed by Simple Diffusion, which can better utilize the representation power of diffusion models. The second design choice is which resolution to apply cross-attention for implicit warping. We found cross attention at a lower resolution will destroy details due to excessive downsampling, while cross attention at a higher resolution is hard to converge due to the long context length. To solve this issue, we propose a progressive training strategy. In the first stage, we pre train our model from scratch on 18 million data at a lower resolution, 512 by 256. This stage focuses on learning low and mid-level structures and warping. Then, we continue to train the exact same model with the same data but at a higher resolution, 1024 by 512. This stage mainly focuses on high-frequency details. Thanks to the pre-training in the first stage, now the cross-attention at higher resolution is much easier to converge. Here, I show some ability results of progressive training versus directly training the model in the highest resolution without the lower resolution pre-training. As we can see, progressive training does not suffer from some mid-level warping and structure errors. Here is another ablation study for our progressively trained single-stage diffusion model versus the two-stage cascaded diffusion models. We can see the small tags and logos are better preserved. Now, let's take a look at the second challenge, preserve the person identity. Here, I provide two failure cases of try-on diffusion. The first row fails to preserve the tattoo in the input person. 
while the second row distorts the muscle structure of arms. The root cause of the person identity loss is training data. Ideally, we would like to have triplets for training the VTO task, the person input, the garment input, and the ground truth. The person input and the ground truth is the same person under the same pose but wearing different garments, while the garment input and the ground truth are different or same people under two different poses but wearing the same garment. However, in practice, it is really hard to acquire this type of training data. We can only get a pair of images of same garment under two different poses. To tackle this issue, most video methods treat one image as a garment input, while the other one serves as both the person input and the ground truth. To avoid the ground truth garment leaked into the person input, most methods utilize a clothing agnostic representation to remove the ground truth garment from the person input. However, this representation not only removes the ground truth garment, but also removes the person's identity like body shape or muscle structures. To tackle this issue, we propose to use DreamBoost style fine tuning so that the fine tuned model can memorize the identity of our target subject. However, there are two challenges for the fine tuning. The first challenge is it is really hard to acquire the fine tuning dataset. For person input and ground truth, we can directly utilize the target subject. But for garment input, we would like to have different people of various poses and body shapes wearing the same garment as the target subject. In practice, it is really hard and expensive to collect this type of data. The second challenge is that fine-tuning the whole model like DreamBoost did will lead to overfitting and inefficiency. To tackle the first challenge, we propose to use a synthetic fine-tuning dataset generated by our pre-trained model. We first define a set of person inputs under different poses, body shapes, and skin tones. Then, we treat our fine-tuned target subject as garment input and send them into our pre-trained model to get trial results. We repeat this process for all person input. The generated trial result can now be treated as the garment input for the fine-tuning dataset. They wear the same garment as the target subject and under various poses and shapes. To tackle the second challenge, we propose a novel architecture named VTO Unit Diffusion Transformer. The key idea is to disentangle the encoding of conditional inputs from the denoising process. We first project the noisy image and all conditional inputs into the latent space using separate encoders. Then, we use a DIT transformer to conduct the conditional denoising process. After it is denoised, we use another unit decoder to decode it into the pixel space. All modules here are trained end-to-end -end on our dataset. Then, for the fine-tuning stage, we only need to fine-tune the person features instead of the four models. We first get the initialization of person features by running through the person encoder. Then, we freeze all learnable components and only optimize the person features on the fine-tuning dataset. This fine-tuning strategy can reduce the fine-tuned model size from 4 GB to 6 MB, as now we only need to store the person features instead of the full model for each subject. Furthermore, since we freeze most part of our system, the underlying distribution learned during training are not destroyed by the fine-tuning. Here I provide some qualitative results for the person identity preservation. As we can see, our method can better preserve person's pose and body shape compared to non-fine-tuning version, and we don't overfit to the garment worn by the target subject compared to the fine-tuning full model and person encoder version. Here's another example on men. Thanks for your interest. Please refer to our paper and project website for more details.